uh, we are in Florida uh, engaged in trying to restore the Everglades ecosystem. Uh, this has been described uh, variously as the world's largest, uh, most complex, uh, certainly is one of the world's most expensive efforts uh, ever undertaken to restore an ecosystem, uh, one that was damaged by humans. As part of restoration of this system, uh, which we are investing billions of dollars in to do, uh, we need to be able to know whether or not this restoration is going to be successful. And our research on alligators and crocodiles and research on other species in this system, uh, such as Rosie's boombills, which I'm going to talk a little bit more about, help us understand whether or not we are, we are making progress with um, that ecosystem restoration. In terms of alligators and crocodiles, we can ask very simple questions that are easy for people to understand. Are alligators too skinny, for example? Uh, we can count them and are there too few? We can look at nests and see how well nests are doing. So we can look at very simple things about the animal's biology and translate that into uh, telling us how well the ecosystem is doing. Um, this project uh, with Lacoste and with Save Your Logo is going to help support that research. And in addition to supporting that research, is going to help us undertake things that we have not yet been able to do, and such things as putting satellite uh, tracking devices on the alligators and crocodiles so we can get a much better understanding about how they move and how they use habitats in response to our efforts at restoring the system. Um, one of the uh, important things about alligators and crocodiles is that they are linked to a lot of other parts of the system. Uh, they depend on a healthy Everglades in terms of having the right amount of clean water in the right places at the right time, uh, as do other species. And other species have the same kinds of de dependencies um, as do alligators and crocodiles. Um, I've done a lot of work with Jerry Lorenz from the Audubon Society who works on rosy and spoonbills. And rosy and spoonbills and crocodiles depend on exactly the same things to survive, having the right amount of water in the right place in the estuaries to produce the food that makes both people successful. And what I want to end up by saying before I turn it over to other speakers very quickly is to answer the question, why should we restore the Everglades? And a lot of people answer that question in terms of its um, beautiful uh, ecological and environmental values. Indeed, it was the first and it's the only national park established for its biological values. Other national parks have been established because of the views they offer or because of geological features. The Everglades was established because of its biology. Why is that important? That's important because the ecology of the Everglades is the economic engine of South Florida. It's just not the ecological engine, it's the economic engine. That means that everybody in South Florida depends on it. We depend on it for supporting the tourism that we have. We depend on Everglades restoration directly because it's going to produce a tremendous amount of jobs for people. And we also depend on a healthy Everglades because we have already admitted that fixing an unhealthy Everglades is going to cost us somewhere between 10 or billion, 10 to 20 billion dollars to fix. So there are very sound, very compelling economic reasons for us to save the Everglades. And why is that important? That's important because we're in tough economic times, and everybody talks from top to bottom about how the government's going to be cutting, be, going to be cutting spending, and that's true. And, but there's two things from that. One is to make sure that we are not cutting spending, which is actually going to create more money in the course of doing that. And the other comment I'll make is that's what makes initiatives like this so important. Because as we're going to see a decline in government support for this kind of research, we need to see an increase in private support for this kind of research. And to me, one of the most significant things about this is taking a step forward to this new kind of a partnership where we have private people supporting our research as well as the government. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.